Hey YouTube, Sam here. Well, we're going to be wiring up some plugs today. It's just basically going to show you how to go from one plug to another plug. And really, you wire them the same, so I'm not going to show you that part of it. But, you stick around until the end of this video. I know it's going to be somewhat of a long video already. Stick around to the end, and I'll give you some tips or tricks. Uh, if you get bored, go ahead and skip to the end. There'll be a couple tips or tricks, especially for the new ones that really don't know what they're doing yet. All right, basically Let's doing this, making it so it goes from here to here, and from here it's going to go over to where I'm going to show you, and from there over to here. It's pretty simple, but I figure this might be something that somebody might not quite know. And first of all, I'm no expert at this. Uh, if you hurt yourself doing something I do or burn your house down, I'm not responsible. If you don't like the way I'm doing it, don't do it. But um, you got kind of a silver, and you got a uh, coated. <clears throat> Your ground always goes to the green. Some appliances and things like that in areas that can be black, and we're in the United States, so it's different in your country, and there's a lot of differences between other countries and our stuff, so uh, you have to figure that out for yourself as well. But here, the green screw is always ground. The brass or darker colored screws or coated screws, whatever you want to call them, are your actual black or power wire and the lighter colored ones see and I keep going backwards here in the video but the, so the darker ones go to black or power or your main coming in and the lighter ones go to your white or neutral which kind of goes back and grounds it out I'm not going to explain all that stuff to you right now what I am going to show you is how to put two plugs together or a series of plugs together. Basically, and like I just said, you're going to have six wires coming out of your box more than likely. You're going to have two blacks and two whites and two grounds. The grounds, this is where I'm going to differ on us here. So because here's the deal I need to use these plugs right now and when I go to have them inspected I can't have plugs in them but right now I need to have some power over here so I'm wiring up my plugs you would take and there's a few different ways people do this some people just kinda wind them around the uh, the grounds wind them around each other cut it off and just use this one I'm not a big fan of that some so some people, people will take and also just wire nut these together with a third one. Let's see if you actually have them in this bag. With a third one, they'll wire nut this together here and use this on the box. Another way is to take these right here, and that's what they're married for. They're kind of like a crimp deal. You take this, you put the two together. And I would crimp that, and what I, I usually keep the one that's coming into the box, not the one going out of the box. I'll cut the one going out of the box short after you've crimped it here. Now here's the deal. Like I said, I'm going to have to reuse this. So right now I am going to use my the wire nut idea. Um, I would highly recommend not doing this for two reasons. One, uh, I, I don't think it's a good as far as connections go to you're putting a whole lot more crap in that box than needs to be in there and three it looks like crap and looks don't really matter but I don't like it so that is what I'm going to do for now though because I'm gonna have to pull this all out have it inspected and then rewire all this stuff in so for now, this is the route I'm going. It may seem easier, but it's really not. By the time you try and shove all this crap in that box, it's a real pain having this all this stu extra stuff in here. And in some areas, this might actually not pass code. I honestly don't know. You'll have to check that out in your area. But I would personally crimp it, cut it, have one wire to deal with, all done. It's real easy. Next. I end up setting my crap down instead of putting it back in the bag. Uh, taking this, find a spot, go ahead and bend it over. And I like starting with my ground 
first. I don't know why, it's just what I do. It doesn't really matter in what order you do this in. And, as always, good and snug. Okay, so there's that. I'll get that out of the way. That keeps the plug off the ground from stepping on it and crap getting in it. Then we're going to take these, and I usually go about a thumb length, and I'll strip all my wires. That's probably a little long, but we can always cut a little bit off. Okay, and then I'll take, and with each one of them, bend these over. Now, in some, depending on what you want to do, let me get this done. Some of these will have um, little things coming out, and you can just stick the plug into them. Or on the back, they'll have holes that you can stick the plug into, or the wire into, not the plug. Highly recommend not doing that. Highly recommend, personally, my personal opinion is to uh, put the loop on it, put it around the screw, and tighten the screw. Uh, just, I don't know. They've been doing it that way for a long time, and I know for a fact the ones that just stick in the back suck. They don't hold. They come loose, and you end up with fires. Um, so now we got everything pretty well prepared to go. We got our plug here and we got the brass side, make sure that is, and it is. And yet again, this is personal opinion. The one coming into the box, I like on top. So figure out where your top plug is. And let's see, nope, see I messed that up. Here we go, so top. I put the one coming in the box on the top Another thing, you want to make sure your loop is going, the small part of your loop is going in the direction that you're tightening it down so that you don't end up bringing it out. Okay, and there's that. Then this, you can kind of take this and squeeze it together. These particular boxes are kind of more difficult to do that with. So I just kind of grab the edge of the screw and the wire and kind of put it together and that these have a deeper inset here, so it makes it a little bit harder to get a hold of it and squeeze the two ends together like that. And yet again, good and snug. And I'm sorry about the lighting, I know it kind of sucks. I'm trying to get my head out of the way here. Okay, and then this one's the other black one here. Oh, and I almost went the wrong way. There we go. Make sure that that's going the right direction. Put that one on the bottom. The one going out of the box. And yet again, that doesn't really matter. It's just the way I do it. And then make sure that, you know, these are tight in there. That they're all the way underneath. So I can turn my head so you can actually see here. And good and snug. Take your time. I tell myself that sometimes. And yet again, that's I use a flathead screwdriver. I know I've mentioned this in the past, but I like using a flathead screwdriver. Um, that way you can crank on it, but at some point it will kind of let loose and you know you got it pretty well tight. You know, give it a couple more bumps at the end just to make sure. And then Take that, and the one coming in, I put on the top. And we're back, we're on the lighter colored screws here. I don't know if I can get a hold of it pretty well. And we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to go ahead and get to the next one now. You shouldn't have to watch me put all this together. So I'm not going to show you how to rewire it all over again, but I'm going to give you a couple other tips in case you haven't watched any of my other wiring stuff here. 
I got my wires coming out here and what I like personally anyway you can use whatever you want I like this uh, Leatherman what is this one it's a Leatherman rebar and it's the cheap one in fact this one I got from trading in my original Leatherman when it broke and they don't, don't have those anymore but I like this serrated part here but you can use whatever you want but you're going to want to take and cut right up the center where the the uh, ground is now you want to make sure you don't obviously hit any of this stuff although the the wires on the side of the black and the white one are fairly thick you're probably not going to cut into them but you still got to be careful uh, a lot of people think you need to go buy a sp special thing for that but i don't and for some reason i put it away all right then you're going to take it and you'll notice also that i had it up here and i cut away from myself uh, it hurts when you cut yourself obviously so I suggest cutting away from yourself and then you're going to I stick that in there bring it and bring it up pull that down bring that up some people think you got to cut all the way around make it look perfect you can be decide how anal you want to be now I should have probably taken more than this off but this is just kind of a to show you what you need to do there you go that strips those down to where you can work on them yet again I need to actually bring it further in this way but you have a pretty good idea on how to do that now I'm gonna go ahead and wire this up give you a couple more tips and tricks so now we got this all done in here and uh, the next thing I would probably do is wrap tape around this especially if you decide to do it do it like this with the the ground being pigtailed like it is here um, I'm putting that back there um, that way if a ground, the ground here was to come up and touch these or these, it'll short it out and you'll have a problem you have to figure out where it happened at. Yet again, this is not permanent so therefore I am going to hold off on that right now but when I finish off I will do that. Another thing, and I did a video on this, I personally like the ground plug at the top. I know there's a lot of people that don't like that but do what you want to do. I don't really care. I have a video already on why I do that, so go check that out if you want. Next thing, take the back of your screwdriver or the back of your strippers or whatever you want to use. I use a screwdriver here. You're going to take that about the middle area here. Oop, I get, went a little bit too far. And bend that down like that. And then I just stick my fingers in here. You got a, kind of a good hold right here where that is and then that will shove up in here like that stick it back in there with your thumb and that kind of sticks that box in there pretty good and then you can just kind of take it and give it a good push all right and then we can start screwing it into the box and I personally I'm in your way I'm sure start with the top get a few in the top then get the bottom in there get a few in the bottom and then if you've never done this before just finish it off this way now I'm okay with slowly because this is a, a plastic box if you run these in really fast you will melt the threads in here and you'll have problems so you just want to get out control over it and just slowly bring it on in and I usually try and do them a little bit at a time. And I... Okay, and then I don't go all the way. You're going to want to get it centered. Usually the bottom one's the harder one. Well, unless it's the top one on yours. You can see that this is needing to get in there a little better. You might have to do a little bit of pushing and juggling when you got that many wires in there. Now, obviously, I don't have any power going to this. I hope you all know that already. Don't screw, stick a screwdriver in there like that. If you do, don't be messing with it at all if you do. Okay. And all said and done, my wires will be 
less because I'm not going to have the pigtail on there. I'm going to clean this up a little bit more and probably strip a little bit more off the back. But like I said, I'm kind of leaving them a little bit long right now because I'm going to have to go back, clip some of the ends off of it, and kind of redo this. But this will get you there. And I was over here uh, hooking this one up, and I realized I didn't explain why you have to do this. The reasoning is because this off and the reasoning for that is because if you just have these two here and you hooked one to here and then hooked the other one to here, that is actually against I think every code everywhere. Um, you can only have one wire hooked to each one of these uh, junctions here because if you have more than one, it can loosen up. It's just it's against every rule book. So you can only have one, but you have two wires. So therefore, you have to hook the two wires together with the pigtail, or like I said, preferably with the crimp, and just have one wire, and then they're connected up here. You got the one, you hook it in. And that's how I will do it in the end when I get done. You really want to make sure these are tight. I've had actually a couple of these come loose on me even after I pulled on them. So, and one more tip. And the wire nuts are color coded, but more than that, they are specific sizes. And some codes actually you have to have a specific sized wire nut. And this one will not go up in there for some reason. And that's the exact reason why, because after so many wires are so thick of wire, they can only take so many things. And if they're too big, then they won't crimp very well. Well, we're plugged in. Yep. Uh, it's working. So obviously the plugs are working. All right. So there we go. There's a video for you. I know it was fairly simple, but, uh, you know, some people just aren't aware of how to do these kind of things and didn't have somebody to teach them how to do it. So therefore, that's why I make these videos. All right. This is Sam, Jack of all, Master None. You all have a good one.